Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be reacting to historical costumes. Or historical costumes, if you know what I mean. Some of my main goals as a YouTuber are to break the stereotypes that surround historical fashion, and to make a difference in the destruction that is happening to our world because of the clothing industry. Costumes contribute to both of these things quite heavily. Not only are they usually made with incredibly cheap materials that are terrible for the environment, but they also usually enforce historical stereotypes surrounding different eras of fashion. So the historical accuracy is questionable at best. So I'm going to be looking up costumes for each decade of the 20th century. So starting with 1900s costumes, then 1910s costumes, and so on. So let's take a look at some historical costumes. 1900s costume. This one is called Walking Dress of Early 1900s Women Costume. Okay. This is interesting. There are things about it that are actually semi-decent. I'm happy that they went with the color instead of just like black because I feel like with a lot of 190s, like Edwardian and Victorian costumes, they just go for like black and frills. That's kind of one of the biggest stereotypes. So let's talk about what they got right. The mutton sleeves, as they're called, actually are historically accurate to the 190s. A lot of mutton sleeves did sort of have a slightly longer puff happening. The overall silhouette is very wrong. This is a little bit more of like almost an 1860s sort of silhouette. This is what skirts in the 1900s actually looked like. They usually had sort of more of a tulip shape. Zooming in a little bit, the lace doesn't look terrible, which is actually a pleasant surprise because usually like costume lace looks really bad. She's clearly not wearing a corset and this costume is $310 Canadian. I would not say that this costume is worth the money. Obviously her hair is dreadful. That's, they just, you don't wear your hair down in the 1900s. This hat, I mean, if it was made a little like, I don't know, stiffer and such, and it was actually worn on top of the head, it would like almost kind of be okay. She's wearing it like sideways and just, like, I don't know what's happening with the rim over here, it's just kind of weird. So overall, I appreciate the effort that was put into this, but the actual outcome is not worth $310, and it is not historically accurate. Let's see, 1910s costume. Okay, this is called 1900s and 1910s adult costumes, bracket World War One. So because they mentioned the 1910s and World War One. I'm gonna say that they thought that they were doing the 1910s here, because World War One was in the 1910s. So this is definitely closer to like a late Victorian sort of look. Oh yeah, and this one is about 37 pounds, so that's probably like $50 Canadian. Definitely not 1910s. Let's talk about the things that are accurate. With the correct hairstyle and the hat worn in the proper place, this could, this hat could possibly work. The sleeves are wrong. They're definitely too long and they're just kind of very boxy and shapeless. The bodice has a much more Victorian shape. Once again, she's clearly not wearing a corset. This sort of drapery situation where there's more volume at the back of the skirt is sort of an 1880s, 1870s, 1880s sort of thing. And that is definitely not 1910s. The fabric, like the underskirt fabric, is all shiny and weird satiny, which is not nice looking. The velvet is probably not the best choice. So the only thing here that's really accurate is the length of the skirt and if the hat was worn in the right way, maybe the hat. Here is a picture of an actual 1910s day dress. 1920s costume. Okay, brace yourself because 1920s costumes are some of the worst for sure. All right, this is called Black Fringe 1920s Flapper Costume. It is $48 Canadian, and this is rough. This one is really rough. 
For some reason, with the 20s, like for costumes, they always go for flapper dresses. Like always, it's always a flapper girl. Whereas, what happened to like, just normal people in the 20s? But anyhow, let's talk about what is accurate about this. Um... Well, the shoes, I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised by. The T-strap is kind of common for a lot of Halloween costumes, but it definitely was available in the 1920s and was relatively popular. And something I'm really appreciating is the heel of the shoe is actually directly, it's like curved and directly under the heel, and it looks a little bit wider at the bottom than it is in the middle. It has quite a decent 1920s shape. There is this sort of strappy situation happening near the toes, which is weird. So those and maybe the necklace are like, okay, but oh lord. So the feather boa is like, I don't know, just kind of a cheap way of trying to like give off of the glamour aesthetic. The hemline, oh, the hemline. It's like, three or four inches above the knee and in the 20s things were like always over the knees if you're trying to be historically accurate when it comes to 1920s. The elbow length gloves, I can't say I've really ever seen much in the 1920s, that's once again just kind of a kind of cheap way to give off the glamorous vibe. The dress is way too figure hugging. This hair is bad. Like, really, really bad. It's just... It's just a modern hairstyle. There's nothing 1920s about this. It's way too long. It's way too messy. It's just kind of like a beach waves look. So, no to the hair. The headband is made of sequins, and sequins were not a thing in the 1920s, actually. If they were to add some sparkle to something, it would be with some sort of, like, beating. Everyone wants to wear something sexy on Halloween, which I get it, they're making their sales, but historical accuracy is just thrown out the window. Here's a picture of an actual 1920s flapper. 1930s costume. Okay, this one is called 1930s costumes for women dash Halloween. So I can see that they're kind of trying to go for sort of the Sherlock Holmes vibe a little bit, the sort of detective look. So there's pretty much nothing accurate about this except kind of the heels if they were a little bit shorter. She is wearing like a men's fedora which was like not a thing. At least not for women in the 1930s. Her hair once again is just purely modern. It's way too long. It just has sort of messy beach waves thing going on. The coat is very ill-fitting. It just looks like she's wearing a guy's coat, and I get that they're trying to get that sort of menswear vibe, but I don't... I just don't see the 1930s-ness in this costume. I just don't. That's how it's titled. The skirt is too short. It is sort of covering the knees, except it has a little slit in the front, which does reveal the knee. Skirts in the 30s actually went a little bit lower than the 20s. They were sort of more like T-length. So yeah, this is definitely not historically accurate. This is just not it. Now we're just gonna move on to the 1940s. Oh. My. Lord. This is tragic. This one is called Women's World War II Sweetheart 1940s Costume Dash Candy Apple Costumes. All right, this is supposed to be a 1940s costume and it is very, very bad. First of all, what is this wig? The victory rolls are like gigantic and then she just has ringlets in the back of her hair and the hairline is just Moving on from the wig, because just like, wow. The shoes are like platform shoes, I think, a little bit. And they're, once again, just like too tall. The dress, I'm not super mad at the overall silhouette. It's not the absolute worst, but this fabric and the color and the bow on the neckline and just wow the skirt length is like 
pretty decent, but I feel like that's partly because her legs are a little bit bent. If her legs were totally straight, I feel like you might be able to see a little, a little bit of her knee, but the length isn't terrible for the 1940s. But I feel like they sort of were trying to take the 1950s housewife vibe and like make it 1940s by doing the victory rolls thing, and I just don't like this. I really don't like it. Even just like doing the actual hairstyle on her actual hair would make things so much better because this is just bad. This is a bad wig. Here is a picture of an actual 1940s lady. Just like, you know, an average lady. All right, 1950s costume. Oh, this one is bad. This is called Rock Around the Clock 1950s and it is, this is $80 Canadian. That, oh ho. Oh. Let's start with the things that are accurate. The length of her hair is pretty good and her shoes are decent. The actual like design of her shoes, they're a little bit shiny, which I don't love because I feel like that just, like you can tell they're just made of plastic. But now let's talk about this dress. First of all, the skirt is cheap as heck. This material is just like all shiny and weird. There was no actual structure in like the bodice section. You can tell it's just like spandex or some weird stretchy fabric so that it can fit more people. But like it doesn't even have like any fake darts. It just looks really weird. And just the black polka dots everywhere. She's wearing like this weird plasticky looking, that looks like a spandex shrub. That is not a good look. Yeah, pretty much the only thing accurate about this is the length of her hair and the main design of the shoes. But other than that, this is very bad. Here is an actual picture of a teenager from the 1950s. 1960s costume. Okay, this next one is called 1960s Paisley Hippie Costume and it is $62 Canadian. Once again, starting with the things that are accurate, the length of her skirt is not bad. It looks like just the way she's moving is kind of hiking it up a little bit, but it's, a mini skirt, which is, you know, the 1960s loved their mini skirts. More the later 1960s, because there was still a lot of 50s influences in the earlier 1960s. I kind of like these boots. Are those like little cutouts in the sides? I don't know tons about 1960s shoes, but I feel like those aren't the worst. They're a little more high fashion, but they're not like completely historically inaccurate. Everything from the waist up is so 1970s, like, is, this is just like a 1970s costume. Like the bell sleeves and even like the pattern of the fabric, her hairstyle with the waves like going away from her face and like the little bandana thing. So the hair is wrong because it's like 1970s. Everything waist up is wrong. The shoes are like, okay. Here is a picture of an actual 1960s teenager. And now let's look at a 1970s costume. This one is called Women's 1970s Disco Costume. This could be worse. As we get to the later decades, they're a little bit better because obviously these were more recent and there's people working on these costumes that actually lived in these eras. So like, I feel like it's, a little bit better. The pattern of the fabric, it's not like anything I've really seen, but like the concept of it is pretty 70s. The bell sleeves and the bell bottoms, the sort of like matching set thing. The shoes look pretty good with their sort of chrome effect. The hair having lots of like those kind of wispy layers situation. Um, is pretty 70s. So this one like I'm actually kind of okay with. Obviously like it's cheap and the material looks cheap. There's a few little things, but overall it's like passable. It's like a decent 1970s costume. Here is a picture of an actual 1970s disco look. By the way, if I don't mention the prices for some of these, it's probably because they're actually not for sale at the moment. So I feel like once you get to the sort of 80s upwards, it's not like as costume anymore. It's much more similar to today's fashion. So I'm just going to leave it here. So that was some historically inspired costume attempts. Some aspects of some of those were not terrible. Some of them were kind of 
just bad. Just really bad. Before I finish up the video, I'd like to mention that I have this email right here where you can send me images of vintage fashions that you'd like me to react to. You can send me super weird fashions that you find or some really tragic costumes that you find if you'd like, and I can react to some of them in videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Possibly the saddest thing of all is the link to the Pinterest board where this image was is called 46 Best 1950s Costumes Images. Um... No.